Good afternoon. Welcome to my video blog on life, death, and resurrection. Our nonprofit Lamps of Glow makes these video segments possible. We rely on friends like you to continue offering content. Please click the product link in the description to purchase a Pray Every Day wristband for yourself or for a friend. Share the joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, may every work of ours be grounded in truth, be exercised with purity of heart, and achieve results that yield goodness, generosity, and growth as we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We've just celebrated several new beginnings. We ended one church year at the end of November and began a new one at the beginning of Advent. We ended one calendar year and started a new one January 1st. We celebrated the birth of a new king at Christmas time, and we celebrated the beginning of Jesus's public ministry the beginning of his life at his baptism. Why do we celebrate these events? And what do they have in common? What do they teach us or tell us? That first question, why do we celebrate those events, is answered by the following questions. So let's take a look at them. <clears throat> Every cycle has a beginning, a middle, and an end. For now, we're going to focus on the beginning. There are some key elements to new beginnings. We can close the book on what was before. We can renew our passions and our motivations. And we can look forward with real new hopefulness to what's to come. The takeaway is that something new is coming on a beginning. The event itself that we're celebrating isn't the end. All of these events that I mentioned, the four events, Advent, New Year's, Christmas, the birth of our Lord, and the baptism of Jesus, they all give us a chance to reflect on what was and to hope for what is to come. In the last cycle, starting at Christmas 2020, over a year ago, we celebrated Jesus' birth, we studied his public life, we experienced his passion, death, and resurrection, and then we studied some more of his lessons. Did we encounter Jesus in a new and deeper way during that time? Did we allow his teachings and his blessings to show in the way we live out our lives? We have a new beginning, so we get a chance to try again. Last year, we worked, we studied, we struggled, we celebrated. Maybe we took two steps forward and one step back. Maybe we grew closer to some people and grew apart from others. Did we make a positive contribution to the world? Did we leave the world in a better place as we moved into this next year? We have a new beginning. We get a chance to try again. Christmas, the birth of Jesus. Did we experience joy? Or did we get lost in the busyness? Did we celebrate everything that is good with those around us? Or did we begrudge some, envy others, and blame our suffering or our situation on the next guy? We can try again. I'll come back to this one in just a minute. Now the baptism of Jesus. This is a particularly Catholic event. We watch as Jesus, a man, no need for repentance, not a mean or selfish bone in his body. Yet he submits to an act that was meant for us, those of us who fall prey to self-preservation, selfishness, indignation, gossip, judgment. He repents in solidarity with us, on our behalf even. Is that an example that we've striven to follow? Is that something that maybe we could improve on in this next year? Here we have Advent, New Year's, and Repentance. Three chances 
to reevaluate and to start over, to hope for more and better perspectives, to rekindle positive motivations. Really great stuff, wonderful opportunities. And then we have that fourth event, the birth of a newborn baby. Born to be a king, yet born into total poverty and born as a baby, completely dependent on others. That is just an astounding humility. The purity of a newborn doesn't escape many people. I mean, what baby is known to make fun of others, gossip about the neighbors, be envious of what other people have, tear down what other people built, lie? I mean, when they're hungry, we know it. A baby doesn't have expectations. They have needs, but they don't expect. We rush to protect babies. We make sure they're taken care of. They bring out the love and the joy in people. They engender a hopefulness. Babies carry with them a hope for the next generation. Babies are just amazing. And then we have Jesus. Born to be a king, a different kind of king for sure, but born into humble beginnings with a purity untouched by what we sometimes call fallen humanity. That is, the learned behaviors of false expectations, selfishness, hopefulness, hopelessness, I'm sorry. This is what the beginning of every cycle evokes, a return to purity, to purity of heart and mind and body and soul, purity of intent, and purity of motivation. And in that return to purity, we gain a new sense of humility, a greater appreciation for the other, new understanding of our interdependence. We experience many new beginnings in life, so let's make each one of them count. Let's strive to live in solidarity with one another and to walk with humility and confidence and to offer something good each day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God, we honor you for setting the universe in motion with such complexity and beauty. May we always challenge ourselves and others to return to the good and to purity of mind and heart. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Stay tuned for video blog segments in the coming months as we explore our understanding of humility, dependence, and trust. The first segment was before Christmas. If you missed it, you can find it on Facebook and YouTube. Feel free to post questions as we explore the topics together over the coming months. Dates and times will be announced online. And if you find this helpful and interesting, invite a friend and share, like, and comment so that more people can see our posts. Again, I'm grateful to Lamps Glow for making these video blog segments possible. We're continuing our Prayer is Good Appreciation campaign into 2022. Send a Pray Every Day wristband to a family member or a coworker or a friend and click the link in the description to tell us who you would like to recognize. Have a wonderful day.